cellars in the streets made all New Orleans smell like Mama's Kitchen. This year, though, fast as my thoughts turned to Mama's Kitchen, I steered him away. It was a long road home, and I had other plans for the holiday. But before it was over, I was to learn there's more than one road to Christmas. Sure as my name's Jim Bowen. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, one of me. Same to you, Maurice. A hot rum toddy, see? Well, where is it? Let's see it. I searched for three days before making my choice. If you're not satisfied, our friendship is at an end. <laughs> well, now, look at this. Ah, that's a beautiful brooch. Oh, I sure wish I could see Mama's face when she finds this in her Christmas stocking. Perhaps you should change your mind and uh, deliver it to her in person. Might as well ask me to change the course of the Mississippi River. My shipment of indigo is held up on a sandbar just above Natchez. Won't make me honest till Christmas night. It means a lot to you, that shipment. Ten thousand dollars to your profits. I think she would gladly exchange it for a third of that ugly face of yours. Now listen, Maurice, there are times when I wish you'd stop telling me how to run my life. I mean, I... Bowie of Appaloosas? Merry Christmas, sir. I can handle my own they affairs, say, you know. You they have... say that you are quite a great man, especially when there's a knife in your hand. Is that so? Look, monsieur, you are superfluous. This quarrel is between friends. No, my dear sir, no. No, no. It is you who are superfluous. He left in a hurry. Which way to go? Way to go? Who can tell? Perhaps to spend Christmas with his mother. Now look, Maurice, there's no time to be amusing. Where's that? Wait a minute. Where's that brooch? He took it. Anyone know that man? I have seen him, I think. Last night at the baccarat table. Yeah? What's his name? My memory is not good. Maybe I can help your memory. Monsieur, with all respect, his name I do not know. Only that his home is Bellicine. Bellicine, where's that? About 20 miles up the river road. Oh. Jim, you shouldn't go alone. My drink is on the house. my son. Oh, welcome. I'm welcome. sorry, sir, there's been some dismay. 
Alcibiades here. Alcibiades returned. Miss, what, what is all this? Dear, dear uncle. Huh? Please, say nothing. I'll explain later. Did I not say my prayers would be answered? Come, let's go in. Oh, no, no, my dear. You need no longer bear an old man's weight. Alcibiade is here. Alcibiade. Your arm. You see, Israel, Alcibiade has come home. I can't... Monsieur, it's Christmas Day. And you have it in your power to give a great gift to all of us here at Bellissime. Oh, I know you won't refuse. I'm sorry. I've come to Bellissime for an entirely different reason. Please? You see, I can explain why you're washing. Hmm? The water is beautifully hot. Yeah. And you are rather dusty. Yeah. The old gentleman downstairs is Jean-Baptiste Plochel. His daughter was my mother, and his son, his only son, was my uncle Alcibiade. The man he uh, takes me for? Must be a strong resemblance, huh? Well, there is enough for him. My uncle, too, was tall and dark-haired. And he was the handsomest, gayest, kindest creature my mother used to say. And the one his father loved best in all the world. This is his room. It's just as he left it 20 years ago. T 20 years ago? Well, he'd have changed by now. He'd be middle-aged. Can't the old gentleman see that? Well, he sees what he wants to see. For him, those 20 years have never been. And Alcibiade is still the young man who set off so gaily for Paris to make his grand tour. It was a day in spring when he went away. And he promised his father he would come back to have Christmas dinner with him. But God willed otherwise. And his ship was lost with all on board. I see. So that's why your grandfather is so confused. Well, consider, monsieur, his only son. My mother used to say he was never the same man. Never. Now he's old and his mind is caught in... And he thinks that you... Yeah, I know what he thinks. But I'm sorry. This is just a piece of bad luck for both of us. It's been the same for so many Christmases. This morning at daylight, he was wrapping his cane on the back gallery, calling all the servants together. This room must be arranged and dinner prepared and all must be in readiness for the return of Alcibiade. And then he sat down to wait, faithfully, like a child. Mademoiselle, I know what you're intending to ask, and I hope you won't. Well, how can I not ask you? It's what I've prayed for, that God would give just one more happy Christmas day to my grandfather. And the good God answered me. Why else are you here? You understand now. You will let him believe just for this one day that you're his son. You will grant him his Christmas dinner with Elsa the Art. I'm afraid I can't. I I mean, I'm here on urgent business of my own. Welcome home, Mr. LCBR. Clothes. It's his coat. Put it on. I don't want to wear his thing. First one arm, 
Well, I can tell you right now, it then won't... Then the other... It won't fit. So? There's no point in trying. You next to me. Where is Andre? Andre? <sighs> Fool of a Josh forgot to wake me. I'm terrible. Andre. I, I beg to be excused. We will not excuse you. Come. Pay your respects to your uncle. What? Your uncle, Alcibiade. Andre, follow your sister's example and make your uncle welcome. Welcome, uncle. Oh, no, Israel, my son. first Christmas under a humble roof. And we ask thy blessing upon the families of men who cherish this day above all others, united in love of one another and of thee. Amen. Children, by the grace of God, we are all here together, perhaps for the last time, and I have a duty to perform. Your arm, my son. Esme, Andre, please attend us to the library. <coughs> Lead on, Uncle. Surely you know the way to the library. Oh, Andre, don't joke. Grandpapa, you take my arm. Uncle Alcibiade's legs are so long. I'm sure he must tire you. Put that down. You're safe under this roof. And you've had enough to drink. Look, if I can put on a good face to give your grandfather a happy Christmas, so can you. Come on. Here, my son. Here is the treasure of the Rochelle. Alcibiade, come and stand beside me. Here are the family seals with the coat of arms of de Plochel, which we have had since the First Crusade. Ah. And here is the deed to this house, Bellissime, with all its broad acres. And here are the jewels of Plochel, made to the order of my namesake, the great Jean Baptiste de Plochel, Marshal of France in the time of Henry IV. For generations, these jewels have graced the ladies of our family. On your wedding day, you will present them to your wife with my blessing.
When my father grew old and tired as I am now, I had this key from his hands. And in receiving it, I assumed the guardianship of the treasure of Plochel, of the destiny of Plochel, and the honor of Plochel. Take it, my son. Oh, sir, I, I, I can't. As Sibiad, I command you, lock the strong box. And now, you are master here, my son. Oh, thank God for this day. Esme? Esme, I'm very tired. Well, come in, dear. Your brooch, you know that. I regretted it immediately, but I had no choice. I have immense gambling debts, and there is no one I can turn to. If you're looking for sympathy from me, you're wasting your breath. You belong behind bars, and I'd be happy to put you there. But I don't want to see those two suffer. So if you give me back my brooch, I'll consider the debt canceled. Certainly. On condition that you give me the key to the strong box. Not a chance. What I ask is not wrong. Alcibiade is dead. I am my grandfather's heir. When he dies, the jewels will be mine, but I must have money now. You worthless. You think I'd help you sell those jewels? No, no, I, I, I don't intend to sell them. I merely intend to offer them as a security for a loan. And when my grandfather's estate is mine, I shall reclaim them and no one will be the wiser. Your grandfather mentioned the Plushel honor. How do you figure to reclaim that? What do I care about the Plochel honor? For years, I've been living in the shadow of a dead man. I'm treated like a child. I have nothing that is mine. Everything for Elsa Bia. Keep your voice down. Bui. Bui, I warn you. If you don't give me that key, I, I shall go to my grandfather and I shall tell him the truth. Well, there's the door. Will you give me that key? I... <gasps> I'll Yes, sir. I'm here. This is a strong hand. It's a man's hand. My boy is a boy no longer. Well, consider. He's been gone for, for nearly a year. A year? I don't know. Sometimes it seems like a dream. Asibiad? Yes, sir? Was the turkey to your taste? <laughs> yeah, it was best I ever ate. I remember that you liked to dress with pecans. The big pecans from the tree on the bayou. I had them gathered expressly for you. He's asleep. Monsieur. Monsieur, I have no words to thank you. Oh. And I know my brother, too, is very grateful. I, I wouldn't be too sure of that, Mademoiselle. Well, I know he may not think it's manly to say so, but I know what's in his heart. And I know, too, that he is sometimes very lonely. It's good that he has a friend like you. Yeah, oh. Well, I wouldn't say we were friends, exactly. Uh, might say we've uh, we had some business dealings. Well, you came here on business. But you will stay as a friend? I'm afraid that's impossible. I have to be in New Orleans tonight. What's the old gentleman going to say when he wakes up and finds I've left? Monsieur, 
You came to us as a gift of God. And God does not send his gifts incomplete. He'll provide. Well, that seems an awful lot to ask. Even of God. Excuse me. If you will accompany me to the garden, I think we can conclude our transaction. All right. Turn around. The key. Give it to me. Give... I'll cut it out of you. Give up. You, you can have the key. All right. Give it to me. God does not give his gifts incomplete. I've never known how to ask for pardon. But you know, Somehow, after all that has passed, it is not so difficult to say, forgive me. And you've learned something worth knowing. Maybe I have, too. What is this? You said you needed security for a loan. But you've forgotten I've just inherited my... Yes. Yes, you are right. Those jewels are not really mine at all, are they? I am just their guardian. You trust me. And it's not a gift. Just as soon as you're out of your difficulties, I expect it back, and don't you forget that. But the woman for whom it was intended. The woman for whom it was intended is my mother. But uh, she'd just as soon have something else. And I'm going to give it to her. Sir Bowie, I... I cannot imagine what your mother could find more magnificent than this. Well, I've never considered myself magnificent, but uh, who am I to argue with Mama? Mm. Come on, boys. We're going home. Merry Christmas. Here's the star of our show, Scott Forbes. Hello. 
Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And that you'll be with us next week for another adventure in the exciting life of Jim Bowie. He roamed the wilderness unafraid from Natchez to Rio Grande. With all the might of his gleaming blade, he fought for the rights of man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, he was a bold, adventuring man. Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie, battled for rights with a powerful hand. His blade was tempered and so was he. Indestructible steel was he, Jim Bowie, Jim Bowie. He was a fighter, a fearless and mighty adventuring man. Mm-hmm.